Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the morning market preparation video for April 26th, 2019. So my goodness, this month has really gone by fast, and as these earnings continue to roll out and the challenges that they continue to present, seems like it just th makes things go faster and faster and faster, doesn't it? So let's take a look at what's going on with the markets. First thing um, this morning, futures are just kind of, well, two-sided. Um, we have NASDAQ futures trying to push just a little bit higher. We have Dow futures trying to push a little bit lower. S&P 500 futures just slightly lower so far on the day. And really what's going on is we're waiting on another wave of earnings reports for the market to react to. And then a big GDP number that comes out today first thing uh, this morning at 8 30 a.m. Eastern so we'll have to stay tuned for that one let's take a look at what's going on in the charts here trying not to predict anything I just want to take a look at what the technicals of the chart are suggesting so first off uh, obviously the diamonds had kind of a, a rough day yesterday gapping down moving lower but the good news is if we take a look at this level right in here is that we held on we ultimately held on to that support that's a good sign so hanging in there and holding on to that support is uh, just exactly what we want to see obviously um, we would have preferred that we could have um, not had that kind of a pullback yesterday but we did and um, holding right in here in this area is a good sign if we can bounce off of there we should be in pretty good shape overall however we do have some challenges here in the diamonds with 3m caterpillar you know boeing boeing tried to come back a little bit yesterday but obviously some of those big major players in the dow having a little bit of struggle going on there we'll have to watch uh pretty closely so keep an eye on that let's take a look at the spy spy um holding up well one thing that you know has kind of been no really noticeable here lately is although we're holding up really really strong and we're holding our trends everything is good here but we've just had that lack of momentum um, as we run up here to attack this high now we We've tried a couple times. You can see there's our high print in the SPY over there, um, clear back in September and um, of last year. And whether or not we can make it through that point, that's what we're waiting on. So watching this price resistance here is what we need to do. Now, I would suggest that the GDP number could be just the catalyst we're looking for. If the GDP number were to come in strong, it would suggest that fears over the global slowdown or the economic slowdown in the United States um, the worries over that may not be warranted that it may quell those fears just a little bit however at the same time if those numbers were to come in um, weaker than expected that of course could really cement those fears and um, cause us some issues bringing out the bears so that GDP number this morning, if we get a good strong reading on that GDP number, that may be just the catalyst we need to pop us through here in uh, the SPY as we head into the weekend. So kind of keep an eye on that. We're just right there and I think it would be really disappointing, wouldn't you, if we get that close and then not, not break through. So we'll want to watch that close today. Let's take a look at the queues. Q is looking really, really good, holding up strong. And you can see, although we had a little bit of a pullback yesterday, everything remains strong. We're well above our sub major support level. So any rest or pullback in here um, shouldn't be a big surprise um, if we need to rest or or, or uh, test these support levels at some time. So watch that close. We're starting to run out of a little bit of momentum here. Now that could certainly change next week. We just have a pile of earnings coming in next week. That could certainly change this picture an awful lot. So let's stay on our toes, stay really focused. There's gonna be some challenges ahead. Let's take a look at IWM. That IWM, um, good sign yesterday and that the bulls fought back holding on to this trend. I mean, just hung right in there. 
on that trend. But let's um, let's make no bones about it. There is some problems here in IWM. It is lagging way behind the rest of the markets. It seems to be truly lacking enthusiasm to move up. And we have a major resistance level right in here that we'll want to keep an eye on. We just keep banging away at it. Uh, unable to break through at least at this point so we'll want to watch that close if we're to if we were to fail through this level we could be in real trouble here on IWM so we'll want to watch that stay focused on that price action don't try to predict it that's all we can do is stay focused on that price action and trade what we see in the charts don't try to gamble particularly around earnings uh, what a mess and have I mentioned that I really don't like earnings at all <laughs> it's it just it just throws a, a monkey wrench into the works and uh, creates lots of volatility, lots of challenges for um, all traders. Um, so kind of uh, stay focused on that price action. Remember, it's Friday. We we at Right Way Options hit run candlesticks. We like to call Fridays as profit Fridays. It's a good day to reassess everything, maybe take some profits, reduce your risk heading into the weekend. And that may be really important for this weekend. And we'll talk about that in just a second. Let's take a look at the VIX here real quick. The VIX started to creep up a little bit yesterday, starting to show a little bit of fear coming into the market. But then as those bulls fought back throughout the day, rallying up the Dow just a little bit, um, that fear kind of subsided here on the day. But let's keep in mind, this is an important level of support down here. And if that continues to creep, um, we could have uh, that fear creep coming into uh, the market and causing us a little bit of trouble, uh, particularly in the in the form of extra volatility. So watch that close if that starts to, to occur. Let's take a look at T2122. It's at four week new high, new low ratio. And as you can see, we had a significant pullback in that T2122 indicator and dropping us back below our 50% um, level right here in the chart. Now we were pushing up here toward that bearish reversal zone. We certainly seem to have gotten that all of a sudden. And that pullback um, was pretty darn um, um, useful to us because it opens up the door. It opens up that door of a possible upside move. So if we happen to get that really good GDP number today, we could see that power back uh, to the upside. However, um, it also tells us that we have a pretty good open door to the downside as well. So if that GDP number disappoints, don't be too surprised to see us move down into this lower area as well. Let's take a look at our economic calendar. Our economic calendar today doesn't have a whole lot on it, but what it does have on it, we want to pay attention to. Um, first thing this morning, we have our GDP number. Now, the GDP consensus is suggesting that the core number pull back, but that the overall number comes in um, flat. Uh, from last reading to maybe a little bit better. A lot of analysts are, you've probably seen the news reports this morning, a lot of folks kind of hoping and praying really that this number comes in strong. So watch that number here at 8.30 this morning. We also have consumer sentiment at 10 and uh, Baker Hughes uh, break count is nothing to worry about at all. So uh, just kind of keep those two things in mind and particularly this GDP number. Now, I want to point out next week and... I had mentioned that we really need to be focusing in and thinking about what is on the way. Next week is going to be substantial. First, if we take a look at next week's uh, calendar, it is literally chock full of big reports. We start off Monday with two market moving reports first thing um, in the morning. And then notice that we are full of big reports throughout the week. Keep in mind, FOMC is next week. 
week as well. That's uh, one of those things that always creates a little turmoil in the market. We have ISM next week. We have the employment situation number on Friday. I'm telling you, it's going to be a busy, busy week on that economic calendar next week. And the reason I'm bringing that up is to just make sure you think about that, consider that as you plan your risk going into the weekend. What are you going to do? Are you going to take some profits? Are you going, Are you thinking about adding risk into that big of a week? Just think about that carefully as you move forward. Also, remember, on the earnings calendar, um, today we, we only have, well, less than 90 companies reporting earnings. We do have plenty of notable earnings in that. But next week is a big, big week in earnings. Um, and as a matter of fact, this week is just kind of the warm up for next week. We have nearly 1,300 companies reporting next week. That's almost double what we were this week. And we know we've got a lot of really big market moving reports, you know, such as Apple, uh, coming in next week. So lots of big reports to consider, lots of things that could move us around heavily and you want to consider that as you plan your risk into the weekend. Um, so with that, everyone, hey, I want to wish you all a fantastic day and I want to wish you great profits in your trading today. And if this is the first time you've seen these videos, please do me a favor. Click that subscribe button on YouTube. If you happen to be watching the video over on Facebook, make sure you click that thumbs up button over there. I truly appreciate that. Click, um, click the thumbs up on YouTube and, and, and Facebook. Uh, make sure you um, click that bell icon when you click that subscribe. And also make sure that... Um, you leave a comment if you believe the video is worthy. You know, those comments, those thumbs up buttons, um, help the algorithm show these videos to more people. And I truly appreciate that. You guys are awesome. Um, I'm trying, I'm doing the very best I can keeping up with answering all of those. And um, I truly, truly appreciate that. And thank you so much for, for doing that. Let's take a look at uh, some charts that may be setting up, things that you might wanna be keeping an eye on as we move forward here in the next few uh, few days. One I think to keep an eye on uh, might be, take a look at, whoops. Take a look at W Day. W Day, nice little wedge pattern. We're pushing up here, trying to break through this resistance. And notice that all of our lows here are higher. W Day, really tight wedge pattern. Now, this could certainly move around in here some more before it has an opportunity. But with all these lower highs continuing to hold in here, the pressure on W Day seems to be higher. So you might want to watch that closely to see if that can pop on through and and move on up take a look at our financial stocks i made mention of this yesterday but uh, our big financials uh citibank this is a really nice little pullback into the trend now keep in mind that citibank has a major resistance level that it has to deal with here but this is a nice little pullback into citibank and any rally up in here could be an opportunity but let's go a little bit further Let's take a look at BAC. Um, BAC, very nice looking consolidation, moving over toward its trend, testing this resistance in the chart right here. Let me back this up just a little bit more. Pushing against this resistance in the chart and starting to show signs that buyers want to push that through. So watch this close. We have a low risk entry potential here with a stop loss right below this area. If that can kind of get going, don't be too surprised if it takes a couple more days, two or three or whatever to move over here to the trend before it goes. But BAC looking really good here and showing some strength and going one step further. If you want to avoid some of the volatility um, of, of the 
individual stock, you might take a look at XLF. XLF also pushing that long-term resistance on these financials, financials, but you can see holding in there pretty well. Now, of course, that FOMC meeting next week um, could have an effect on these financials, so you'll want to kind of keep that in mind. But this is a nice little pattern and, and um, showing that opportunity to maybe break out and get moving to the upside here on those financial companies. So keep an eye on that. You might also want to take a look at um, um, a couple oil stocks like VLO. VLO, um, a refiner here. VLO had a really good day yesterday, finally breaking up through this resistance. And we pulled back, we pulled back hard to test that area as support. And as you can see, it was a confirmed hold of that support looking pretty good here. So you might want to keep an eye on VLO. Um, for that opportunity for this to really start moving up uh, this trend um, one to keep an eye on um, and pay attention to uh, another place to look is some of the cannabis stocks um, take a look at CGC CGC holding up really well here you, you can see I've placed an alert here on CGC um, moving up and it has to deal with a lot of resistance right through here. And that's where we're, we're waiting to see if we can pop on through. Don't be too surprised if this has to consolidate a little bit more building that energy in here. But CGC is starting to look good. And we may want to have to wait here for that uh, trend to, to really be established. But it's, it's holding up darn well and looking pretty good. Another one of the cannabis, ACB. Um, has been just kind of hanging out here below price resistance. You can see I have another price alert on the chart right in here, kind of keeping an eye on it. And one thing I think is important here is notice how the last several days the price action has tightened up really tight. We're pushing against that resistance and there doesn't seem to be any sellers in there. So all we need to do is wait for those buyers to pop up in there, maybe break that through. And if that were to occur, I would be pretty interested interested in ACB. So with that, everyone, hey, I want to wish you all the very best uh, profits today. I want to wish, wish you a fantastic weekend. Remember, plan your risk into the weekend very carefully and remember to take some profits. You know, our job as traders is not to be heroes. Our job isn't to, to, um, to try and hit home runs on every trade. Our job is to consistently make money and if um, you have some of those profits if you're nervous about it if you're a little worried about what may be coming next week you know now's a good time to take some of those gains into the weekend it feels great going to the bank on Friday I do that commonly and as a matter of fact I rarely buy much at all on Friday I'm pretty much a seller on Friday to take in those profits doing my job and allowing me to to live this lifestyle of a full-time trader, um, I, you have to get comfortable taking those profits. So everyone, I want to wish you all the very, very best. A great weekend. We'll talk to you all bright and early Monday morning. And just remember, next week is going to be pretty nutty. Take care. Have a great one. And we'll talk to you all very soon.